Yes. Kiki, uh, yeah, just Kiki. Or Kiki. All right. Kiki B is fine. All yeah. right. <laughs> Kiki in the building. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, all right. Shout out to the She Trucking Trucking Group. If uh, you're a female looking for a good group to go to, the She Trucking Trucking Group will be that group. Uh, Kiki, what's going on? What is going on with you? Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, and uh, and yeah, let, let us know what's uh, what's going on. Okay, uh, my name is Kiki. I am from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Maryland by way of Oakland, California. I've been here seven years. Um, I currently work in the Permanent Supportive Housing Division um, in D.C. Um, dealing with housing vouchers, and I decided to change my career over to truck driving. Okay, so and uh, so you you you're doing good in the in the courts and everything and. How how did you come across truck driving? I'm that's that's a far cry since uh, since the courts, right? Right. But I um I worked in transportation a long time ago. It was a long time, maybe about ten years ago, and I wanted to revisit it. But I have a nephew that has been driving for twenty years, and he came to visit me and um. Gave me wanted to give me an opportunity to work with him in Illinois. Okay, to get okay. into the trucking in, industry. Yeah. Okay, so you, you say so, you you say he's been uh, rocking out rocking out for twenty years. Yeah, yeah, for twenty it, years. Is, yeah, is, yeah. We're I'm the youngest aunt, and he we're, we're only like five years apart. Is is he an owner operator or 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 company? Yeah. Driver? He's a he's a um owner. I think he's a lease op. He's a lease op. Oh, he's a lease op. So he was so he was just bringing you in, not necessarily to work with you, right? Or for you to work with right. him. Right, right. Maybe down the line, the company that he's at, you have to have a year experience. So he was trying to help me to get you know get some get myself my feet well feet wet get in. And then be able to go out there with him in Illinois because he was letting me know that Illinois is a really good place, you know, to 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 uh, get in, really get in, and get you know better pay and all of that. Really, <laughs> the black ops area. <laughs> <laughs> Illinois. Is the oh, okay, <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, hey, bro, I'm not gonna. Hey, I'm not gonna argue with you. You, you know, to each his own and. Everybody got their opinion, my G. It depends, but okay. you know what? You know what? It depends on. Uh, it depends on the company too. I mean, you know, it depends on yeah. because there's a lot of you know the, a lot of black op companies in Illinois that that are good companies to work for. One in, you know, I'm going to shout out one of them because I, you know, I haven't had no issues with them or nothing like that, but. One of which is Unlimited Carriers, and they're located in Bowling Green, Illinois. And okay, you know they, you know they're, you know Russian, uh, European, you know style type company, you know, and uh, you know they, they don't have no, you know they, they was a pretty good company to drive for, but you know other black ops companies, you know you really, really got a deep dive, like like deep like. Like get your feet wet and deep, you know what I'm saying? Where it says, you know, where it says stride the the shallow area. No, 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 no. You you got to go in the deep to get you know to make sure that these companies is right for you. You know what I'm saying? It's right for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. So, that's true. So um, it's okay. I'm gonna could I add him in because it was a, he told me about the reason how I learned about. You is because when he first told me about trucking, he told me to go to your podcast and from the beginning and watch the older video. Oh, <laughs> That's what he told me. He well, sent me a link. Well, tell him I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm like this, man. You know, I, I'm like this. See, a lot of people 
look at the Lockout Men podcast show, you know, and I'm not going to say the word haters or anything like that. But a lot of people that that just don't understand the Lockout Men podcast show, they come on and they be like, oh, Lockout Men don't have that many subscribers. He don't have that many views. And is, is he a successful channel and all like that? And I look at that like, you know, well, on the offset, yeah, but, you know, if if I'm able to, or not me, but if my videos, like I, I, I did in a community post, if my videos is able to reach out to one person and they get something out of it, brother, man, I did my job. I'm good. I'm Gucci. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean. Podcast because of the questions and things, just me coming in, I don't know not a thing, you know. And uh, to go there to see, you know, the questions that you're asking, you know, the recruiters, it gives, you know, it gives people something to, you know, something to a guide, you know, to ask questions, you know, because you just don't think about, you know, asking, you know, certain questions. Then you get in there, then you realize something's wrong, which I did, which was a mistake I did with this situation. Um, All right, yeah. we, so, we're um, going to get it. We're going to get yeah. in that situation in a hot minute. But before we, before <laughs> okay. we bring, before we bring your who, who, your uncle or your cousin? This is my nephew. This uh, is my brother. Son. Oh, this is your nephew. Okay, okay, your nephew that been in the game yeah, for only, twenty for twenty years. Yes, your yes. nephew. Yes, he has. Yeah. It's my nephew. We're five years apart. Five years I'm apart. The child. We're only five years apart. Yeah. Nephew, so it's, it's like it's, it's like we're kind of like brother and sister almost. But. Nephew, <laughs> this, nephew, yes. This is your brother's son. <laughs> this is my brother's son. How, yes. How, <laughs> how old was your brother when he had one? I know it was like twenty years ago, but they were young. Well, they were young. They was young. He's thirty nine, and I'm forty six. And this is your nephew? No, I'm just kidding. My nephew. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so your nephew, your your nephew kind of got you interested in trucking. I mean, what was? Yeah, yeah. What what was the what what, 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 what would be the reason? I know the, I know your uncle or your uncle. God damn it, your your nephew got you interested in trucking. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I mean, I mean. You how long you been in the how long you been in the um government field the courts and everything? Oh, okay, I've been doing that um for about seven years. It's more like it's more case management. I'm doing case management for people that have section eight, well, kind of like section eight vouchers, and but it's people with mental health uh, disabilities, like helping them maintain everything else around them. You know, DC. Um, area has uh, this um, housing first initiative and um, you know make sure that everybody who's homeless has housing before everything else okay um, so so housing is first in DC and um, I think San Francisco and um, Maryland you know the area they had all adopted the housing first initiative so that means before they take care of any other social issue you have your housing has to be taken care of first Okay, that so sounds make great. Sure you got a, got yeah. a place to live. Right, right, yeah. That sounds great. Yeah, and, they, so and, the and the initiative is for the initiative is for every for every homeless person out there. They try, they try to do it for everyone that's homeless. So, and you know, it starts in the shelter. Those who who and on the street, those who are on the street and on in shelters and you know m one of the most common things that that um people have is mental illness when they're on the street and sometimes when they're in, in shelters been domestic violence has been you know just um you know lack of medication that they're getting that they need you know to be stable there's a whole lot of other you know things that have happened them, other types of traumas murder all kind of stuff you know and um that's kind of like mm -hmm. you, you know when i was growing up uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the social issues wasn't made prevalent to me as I was growing up. You know, I, as I was growing up, I was following like what other people would say about people on the street. You know, the homeless, the bums, the panhandlers and stuff like that. As I got mm -hmm. older, as I got older and starting to understand mm -hmm. 
some of the reasons why some people are in the situations they in kind of made me have a whole different light on on the homeless people. You know what I'm saying? You know, we know majority. Yeah. We know majority of them. You know, like majority of them is because of drugs, of course. But um, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, some of them, you know, got mental illness, like you said. That's another. Uh, domestic mm-hmm. violence, like you said. You know, you you know that you know female mm-hmm. and her kids, you know, are trying to run mm-hmm. away from. You get a lot. You know, trying to run away from their. You know, abusive father, abusive husband, abusive boyfriend. Uh, and then you got, mm-hmm. you know, you got other people that tipped on homeless that was like veterans and all like that, you know, PTSD, you know. So I come to learn and, you know, I mm-hmm. come to learn not, you know, you know, the old saying not to judge a book by its cover. Because even though they out That's there, right. you know, even though they out there panhandling and and you know panhandling and doing what they doing, you got to understand what was their background and what brought them to that. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Major ninety nine percent of the people that I did that I service have had a traumatic injury. I mean, traumatic issue that has happened in their life, where they either nearly lost their lives or they saw somebody else lose their lives, you know, and then that people don't realize that in the hood, that creates trauma in itself, you know, for people, you know, and it affects every other part of your life, including maintaining a place to live, you know, it just, it does. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And when people, when people are in that situation, because you see other people, you, you see other people of, of privilege, you know, I, I'm maybe that's the wrong word to use, but when other people that's, you know, that's making money, that's doing well, that's well off, they look at those type of people as like, you know, like second class citizens and stuff like that. You know, you you don't understand, you don't understand their background. Maybe they was in a in a pl- in a in a place of privilege, but they was forced out of it because of a uh of an experience. You know, and you just, yep. and you just don't, you know, you just don't know. So, but there is, I mean, I'm going to say this too. There, there is some con, mm-hmm. there's some con artists, there's some shystiness, you know, mm-hmm. yes, and, it, it, and it kind of messes up. <laughs> it kind of messes up when you see somebody out there that's, you know, that's look like they're in a situation, you know, that they lost their limbs in a war or or they, you know, just honest, you know, that looks like they're honestly in a situation. And then you come back around and you see them getting up out of the chair or or ch- yep. or changing clothes and walk across the street and get into a brand new Audi 5000. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so <laughs> you guys are the ones, you guys are the ones just messing me up over here. Like, I, I don't know. Am I'm giving it. If I'm if, if, am I'm giving it to you on a on a on a good cause or am I giving it to you just so you stand out here and make some money? Let me know. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> Let me know. Just be honest with me. Because you know, if you out here trying to make some money, then you know, it, it's it's like give me the opportunity to make up my mind on where to, whether or not I want to give my money to you or not. You know, don't don't just try right, to, don't right. just try to con me out of my money. I mean, if you're out here trying to make some money, I understand the economy is fucked up, and you got to do what you got to do. I get that. Just let yep, me know. That's real. <laughs> just yep, let me know, like, that's hey, real. right? Just let me know because if I turn around, and give you a couple of dollars, and then I see you walking over to an Audi Five, a car that I don't even have, bro, <laughs> give me my money back. <laughs> Uh-uh. Give, no, right. give, give, give me my two dollars back, bro. No, it's only two dollars. No, 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 no. That's that, that's hard earned money. Give me my two dollars back, bro. Yeah, give me my money back. Right. You you good. And another thing is like uh, another thing too. Don't come up to me because I had this happen also. Don't come. Don't mm-hmm. hey, bro. Listen, brother, brother man. Hey, listen. Let me talk to you. Don't come up to me saying that you hungry. And I offer to take you to a restaurant, i.e. McDonald's, because I got the McDonald's app. I take you to a restaurant, grab you some, you know, grab you some grub and shit. 
And then you look at me like I'm crazy. Then I'm going to have to kick you to the curb, bro. Okay. Uh, I was kind of wondering, can, can you just give me the money for the amount that you're about to pay for? The no, nigga, you said you was hungry. You said you was hungry. If you hungry, you would take it. Right. <laughs>